What's going on everybody? Jeremiah here from Babylon Backyard, a pond and garden channel packed full of informative how-to videos for you. In today's video, we're at Echo Global Farm in Fort Myers, Florida. Echo is doing some amazing things and you're gonna love this video. Check it out. So I'm here at the headquarters of Echo in Fort Myer, Florida, and I'm here with Elliot. Tell us a little bit about Echo. Yeah, well, Echo is a Christian nonprofit that seeks to um, honor God by empowering um, smallholder farmers to be able to feed their families. One of the things that we like to say is we, we try to honor farmers' knowledge and seeing that they each have something to contribute. And one of those things, um, I think that uh, goes along not just with growing plants, but is appropriate technology, and that's where I fit in. It's looking for technologies or techniques that are sustainable for the environment, sustainable for the farmer economically, and they're culturally appropriate. This area of the appropriate technology demonstration tour is uh, dedicated to cook stoves. We work mainly with people who typically are using wood or uh, dung or other organic material to cook their food with um, as fuel. And one of the things that that produces is smoke. Actually one of the leading causes of death in the developing world is chronic exposure to indoor air pollution. World Health Organization estimates somewhere around four million people a year die due to chronic exposure of indoor air pollution. So that's why we have this whole area of cook stoves. Um, if we can burn wood or other um, biomass more efficiently with more oxygen, uh, we can limit the amount of uh, emissions and particulate in the air. Um, so there's several different um, stoves that we have around. Rocket stoves is a main one that we promote quite a bit. You can make your own rocket stove fairly easily if you have a few main principles um, down. One of them is um, you want uh, the right ratio of your combustion chamber to your chimney. And so what's, what's happening is you have a air passage you're letting air come in below and you're, you're placing wood on top and feeding the, the, um, the fire. You start the fire from the top and because of the chimney effect, uh, it begins to draw air underneath and burn um, right at the tip of the sticks. You get a nice efficient hot burn and all the heat is going right onto your pot. You can look up some really cool designs on rocket stoves um, and they can be really efficient. They can reduce your fuel consumption by up to half and you can re reduce your emissions by like 90 some odd percent. Um, so it can be literally a lifesaver for people in the developing world that are tr traditionally using uh, cooking over open fires. But if you're having problems with deforestation or other areas where it's difficult to find fuel, um, you may move into a stove, an uh, um, alternative fuel stove. We really like to promote and, and like the, uh, the principles behind it is biogas. So this over here is our biogas digester. So you're just putting your compost, food waste, or? So we can use food waste, animal waste. You could even use human waste, but we don't. Typically we're using animal waste and food scraps. Any sort of organic material will break down in a biodigester eventually, but you don't want anything that's too high of lignin materials, like woody materials. They just take too long to break down. So the digester is working on the principle of anaerobic digestion. So we're limiting oxygen in there. Um, so this one is just made using an IBC tote. The most digested stuff is sort of in the middle where the undigested stuff is towards the bottom or the solids. 
And then up top you get kind of a layer of maybe some fats and oils and things like that floating up there. But that most digested part, we have the uh, digestate coming out this way. So we just have another drum here to collect the digestate. You mix any feedstock you want to mix um, with about half water, you want a slurry when it goes in. When it comes out, it's, it's mostly just uh, a brown water. Now that's basically, um, I mean that's what we might think of as like a compost tea. It's anaerobic, so not exactly the same thing, but it's got lots of good nutrients in it. And so we would use this on our gardens, um, whatever plants we want to fertilize with. It's, it's just a perfect supplement for uh, nutrients. What's happening is the, the methanogens, these are these anaerobic microbes that are naturally occurring in our gut, animals' guts, even like the bottom of ponds, the muck in the ponds, there's methanogens present. Um, they're decomposing organic matter without oxygen and they're producing CO2 and methane. And so the methane is what we're after. That's the, the biogas component of it. Um, and so what happens is that gas starts to bubble up to the top and it works its way out this blue pipe and over to the floating drum collector. And so this, the collector is just made from two other IBC totes. Um, the, the one here, the top one, doesn't actually have a bottom on it and this one is doesn't have a top on it and there's just water in here so the water's to seal it from the gas, so the gas exactly the so it just keeps an airlock there and as more gas comes in this will just float higher and then eventually if we get we don't we're not using this it'll just bubble out underneath here it is low pressure so this is basically at atmospheric pressure um, we put a few bricks on there to give us just a little bit to push the gas out once we capture the gas into our floating drum collector and we just have a uh, little tubing that's bringing it up over here to our stove and this is just a little propane stove that we've adapted to run on low pressure. We have to take out any little jet orifice that it might have to regulate like a high pressure propane or natural gas. You can take that and drill it large, drill a larger hole or some of them you can just unscrew and take out all together. Um, you have to mess a little bit with the air mixture um, because it is lower pressure and then as it comes through here you can basically that's really the only change you have to make um, and then you've got a stove that will run on biogas. Um, you know pretty nice flame no sort of emissions as far as um, that are going to be harmful to us. Essentially this is natural gas. For, for me, this is uh, kind of the beauty of appropriate technology. Using stuff that we have around like IBC totes, you're taking something that was usually seen as just a waste product, especially if you might have a small dairy or some, some animals. You have a bunch of waste that you're accumulating in your milking barn or something like that, and it becomes a hazard for you to deal with if you're not recycling your waste properly. Um, but here with one technology we can take something that was a problem to something valuable for the family and then also for your, your plants. It can make a big impact in that, in that way. Tell us a little bit about ECHO and what their, their whole like goal and plan is. Um, we work in all sorts of places of the world, East Africa, West Africa, Southeast Asia. Um, and we act as basically a, a catalyst, I think, in, in a network of development workers, practitioners, people that are working with smallholder farmers um, to share knowledge, to be verifying claims. People say, hey, this is working well. We say, okay, let's try it and see if it really does work. And then disseminate that to the network of people that read Echo's publications. One of the things that we like to say is we, we try to honor farmers' knowledge and seeing that they each have something to contribute. And one of those things um, I think that uh, goes along not just with growing plants but is appropriate technology and that's where I fit in. It's looking for technologies or techniques that are um, 
sustainable for the environment, sustainable for the farmer economically, um, and they're culturally appropriate. They are usually locally sourced and available um, where they are working. They're able to maintain them and use them long term. How do you guys afford to do this educational work? So we are a nonprofit. Um, we're funded mostly by individual donors, people like you and me who have a heart to make a difference in the world. We want to um, be able to contribute to good work that's going to be a long-term solution to keep people from going hungry. And then also we have a demonstration farm here, so we have public tours. We generate some revenue from the, from the tours, but then also from the nursery and bookstore and seeds. But by far the majority comes from individual donations. So speaking of the individual donations, there is a link in the description below. As you're watching this video, if you like what you see and you want to help support this company, which I highly recommend, check out that link and you can do so. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video, part one of four. Remember that because you want to check out these other videos. There's four of these vis that we're doing with Echo. Uh, although we did cover a bunch of the stuff in the cooking part of the Appropriate Technologies tour, there is a lot more that we didn't go over. So if you ever get the chance here in Florida, Fort Myers area, I would recommend checking out this tour. It is a, it was eye-opening. Don't forget this is a nonprofit organization. The link is in the description below. Go help them out if you can. They're doing wonderful things and anybody who's doing wonderful things I like to support. Hopefully you've liked the video by this point and you've subscribed to the channel so you don't miss these other videos that are coming. If this is just released you won't see the next part two, three, and four. If you're watching it a little bit later those should be popping up on the screen. They maybe already are there. Go check them out. We'll see you in one of those videos.